Our thought for this evening will be keeping His commandments. And I want us to think about what we think of when we hear the word commandment. Maybe we think rule. Maybe we think doctrine as it's sometimes used in the New Testament. But commandments are normally something, or always something, that are unconditional. Something that, that you must do. It is a command. And tonight, I want us to look at the word commandment, but I want us to start by looking at it in two ways. It's important here that we make sure we know whose commandment we are keeping. I know that y'all sitting in the audience tonight, y'all, your minds went to God's commandment. And that's right. That's who we should be keeping. And that's where we are going to go this evening. But you got to be careful in the religious world when you hear the word commandments. Because in the religious world, there are no shortage of commandments. Some are good. Some are not. There are two types of commandments in the religious world. One is man's commandments, and one is God's commandments. The commandments of men, they lead us nowhere but vanity and emptiness. They are a dead end road. Open your Bible to Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15, and we will read verse 9. Many of you probably know this verse. The Bible reads, But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. On the flip side, we have the commandments of God. Turn to Matthew chapter 19, a few pages over. And we will read verse 17. The commandments of God lead to life. Matthew 19 verse 17 reads, And he said unto them, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. We know that in this context it's probably talking about the Ten Commandments, but the principle still stands even today. If we keep God's commandments, we will have eternal life. Our, com our commandments today are a little bit different than the commandments of the Old Testament. But if we keep them faithfully, we can have eternal life. So tonight, I want us real quickly to look at three points. Number one, I want us to look at when should we keep His commandments. Number two, we'll look at why keep His commandments. And number three, we'll look at how should we keep His commandments. Number one, turn to 1 John chapter 2, and we will read verses 3 and 6. When should we keep His commandments? When should we keep God's commandments? Well, the question, the answer to the question is obviously all the time, right? 1 John chapter 2, we will read verses 3 through 6. Reads, And hereby we do now know that we know Him if we keep His commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith, he abideth in him, ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. For us to claim that we know the Lord, for us to claim that we have a relationship with God, for us to claim to be Christians and to not live as the Bible teaches us, God calls us a liar. The Scriptures call us a liar. But to... Let me see where I am. But that word, I want us to focus on those two little words, keepeth. We read once in verse 14, or in verse 4, and then we read it again. In verse 5, and we know that in the old King James, when you see E-T-H, it means to continually. All right, so let's read it one more time in verse 4. He that saith, I know him, and keeps continually not his commandments, is a liar. This is something that we have to do from day one. We have to learn those commandments. It's hard to keep something you don't know. Learn his commandments and follow 
his commandments. Keep them today, keep them tomorrow, keep them the next day, keep them in this situation, keep his commandments in that situation, keep them continually. Verse, point number two, why keep his commandments? Well, really, there are too many reasons if we really dive into it to get in tonight of to why to keep his commandments. But turn to John chapter 15. We're going to look at a couple here. John chapter 15, we'll read verses 10 and 11. The Bible reads, If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept the Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things I have spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. The first reason, and probably the main reason, I would say, that we keep his commandments as Christians is because of love. And there's different aspects to this love. In the first part of the verse, we see that when we faithfully keep his commandments, we abide in a, we share in a love with God that the rest of the world does not get to partake in. We get to have a relationship with the Lord by keeping his commandments that those in the world do not have. We know God loves all people, but God loves those who keep his commandments. There is also another side of this love. Turn to John chapter 14. John chapter 14, we will read verses 15 and 21. If you love me, keep my commandments, Jesus says. Move to verse 21. He that hath hath my commandments... Excuse me, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loved me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him, and he and will manifest myself in him. The other side of this love is a love that we have for God because of what he's done for us. Because he sent Jesus, and we know what all that took. We know that we are not worthy to be saved. We were not worthy of Jesus coming on our behalf and dying for us. We realize that, we own up to it, and we love God for that. And because of that love that we should have for God, we should want to follow all His commandments. There shouldn't be a single command in here that's too hard, or a single command in here that maybe you just don't want to follow. It's just maybe not your style. Maybe it's something you don't want to do. That's not what the Bible teaches us. Our true love for God should urge us, should push us to keeping all the commandments. The second reason I want us to look at real quick is in verse 11 of why we keep his commandments. Verse 11 reads, These things I have spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. You just read the secret to life here. If you want to have a joyful life, if you want to live a life full of joy, a life full of contentment, a life full of peace, don't focus on your own self, but focus on God. Focus on His Word and focus on fulfilling His commandments. And you will live a joyful life, the best life possible. Number three and lastly, how are we to keep His commandments? Well, I would say we are to keep them wholeheartedly, even unto death. When I think of keeping the commandments of God, my mind goes to our perfect example, Jesus. If you want to learn how to better keep the commandments of the Lord, go study the life of Jesus. Turn to Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. We're going to read verses 36 through 39 to kind of get some of the context here. 
Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and said unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch with me. And he went a little further, and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Sometimes it might seem hard for us to follow what God says. Maybe there's a situation come up in our life when we know that if we do what the Bible says, if we follow God's commandments, we might face some type of persecution, some type of backlash. But we look at the example of Jesus, and you saw what Jesus faced. Jesus knew what he was facing. He knew that it was going to be so bad that he asked God, if there be any other way, please let it happen. But at the end of the day, he chose to follow the command of God. If Jesus can do it unto death, so can we. Tonight, you might be here and you might not be a Christian. Well, we can fix that here tonight. If you're here tonight and you haven't, yet started your walk with Christ, and maybe you want to start following the commandments of God tonight, you can do that by first hearing the Word of God, Romans 10, 17. Second, you must believe that Jesus is the Son of God, John 8 and verse 24. Third, repent of your past sins. We read in, verse, in Luke chapter 13 and verse 3. Fourth, confess Jesus as the Son of God, Matthew 10, 32 and 33. Fifth, be baptized for the washing away of your sins. And then you must live faithfully unto death, Revelation 2.10. Maybe you're here tonight and you have done these things, but you have failed in keeping the commandments of God. We're all going to fail. No one is perfect, but we can strive to be faithful. If you have wandered away tonight and you would like to come back to the Lord, He's waiting on you. If you have any need, please come as we stand and as we sing.